Go ahead and pull out this uh, handout you guys got this one. Well, that looks like a picture frame. I'm going to talk more about that in a minute. First of all, I just wanted to introduce our task force. So um, we've got lined up all along here. Um, Sarah May and Ben and Esther Loosemore and uh, Kent and Terry, who's not here. Oh, wait a second. There she is. Perfect timing. Oh, yeah. Terry just, just, just came trying in. to bail me out. Um, <laughs> and Amanda Babcock. Uh, behind me, Tom Dunn and Bill Beck. And uh, it's just been such a great group working together. We, we started meeting in February and uh, we met for about six weeks or so. And then COVID hit and we put it on pause and then we resumed in the last couple of months. And it's just been a delight to work with these guys. I wanna just briefly give a little, little bit of the um, background and context into the impetus for this task force. And then we'll talk about the substance of it itself. So uh, last year, some of you folks in Arcadia will remember this, our township had a township visioning session at the community center. There was a, a series of meetings that were put on there. And I went to this and uh, it was really exciting, you know, 80 people or so um, in the gym at the community center. One of the exercises that we did there was they put out big maps and were broken up into groups of like 10 or 12 around these tables. And they asked everybody, okay, come up with all of the assets in our community that you can think of. You know, the physical assets and the, the different parts of our community, what do you have? And everybody, you know, feverishly writing down things and putting on their list, you know, things like just all the natural beauty, Lake Michigan, um, you know, the Arcadia Marsh and, and those things, Arcadia Bluffs, Camp Arcadia, and so on and so forth. Everybody's doing it. And of course, for, for me, first thing I put on there was Trinity Lutheran Church, right? <laughs> so then they, they, okay, let's get everybody's answers, put it all up. And you know how many people said Trinity Lutheran Church? One. <laughs> this guy. And uh, it kind of broke my heart, to be honest with you. And in that moment, I thought to myself, what would have to be true for our church if in five years, when the township no doubt goes through this whole thing again, <laughs> if in five years, when they do this again, and they go around and do that same exercise, Every person, when they think, what's the number one asset in our community? The first thing that comes to their mind is Trinity Lutheran Church. Where would we be without, without that church? And that's got me, got me thinking, okay, how, how can we continue? And I don't mean, I don't mean in any way to poo-poo the, the great work that God has done and been doing in this church for 138 years. Don't misunderstand me. Okay? Um, but uh, in some ways, the best kept secret in Arcadia now, we don't want that to be the case. We want to be able to um, be out there for the, sake of our, for the sake of our community. And so just to re recount a few things that have happened over the last year, um, and this is really just building on a long tradition of, of our church in service to our neighbors, but um, we, we really rallied around this cry of heart for Arcadia, that we don't just want to be the heart of Arcadia, especially in terms of our, our physical space, but to be, have a heart for Arcadia, to be a church that exists for the sake of the community. And so just a few things happened over the last year. Um, we had uh, brought to your attention the Rogers family, the mom with nine kids. And in a weekend, we raised over $6,000 um, to bless that, that family to the extent that they were absolutely dumbstruck and didn't even know what to make of it. They were expecting like a gift card to Outback Steakhouse or something. And they got $6,000. Um, and then uh, in December, the Schultz Sullivan family, the, the family whose house uh, burned here on 22, and we organized the um, dinner at the community center, and more than 200 people from the community came out for that. And again, I think it raised about $7,500, $8,000 um, for that family. They were just blown away. Um, in the last few months, we organized the Arcadia Care Team um, with about 30 folks from church and also from the community who stepped up to say, hey, I'm happy to help to get groceries, to call on people, to um, take folks, to help help folks get into bed, if that's if that's what they need. Uh, not Carla, but um, <laughs> uh, but whatever whatever it, it, it takes. Um, we established a little free pantry out there, which is a small thing. You think, what's the big deal? Some boxes of macaroni and cheese, what have you. But I tell you what, every single day, there are people, and we live, as you know, right next door. We can hear those folks that drive up at 11 o'clock at night. Because That's you don't have air conditioning. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's really the big point. Uh, 
but I tell you what, there's a lot of folks right now who are really struggling and are uh, ashamed of it. And uh, this is just another small way that we are able to serve our neighbors and help them to keep that little bit of dignity. I'm able to have some food here when I need, need a meal, but I, you know, want to encourage them to get even further help too, but it's a, it's a step, right? All right, all of that is just kind of background. Why are we doing this hard for Arcadia? What, and what's the goal of it and the task force? So the, the task force uh, really used as our kind of our um, a roadmap playbook, this book, God Dreams, which has kind of a cheesy title, but it was a, a really helpful book, a really helpful way of thinking about it. And it introduced to us this tool, and I'm just briefly going to lay this out for you. So this is my beautiful drawing here. So imagine this is a picture frame, okay? And this is like, you know, a Thomas Kincaid painting, or, you know, one of those kinds of things, okay? The landscape painting. And I wrote in a recent inkling about, you know, our family moved out to Colorado, and we saw things like this, right? Where you're taking that drive, and uh, you're, you know, out in the distance, you see the mountains. But imagine here, so you've got the foreground, right? You've got um, just the things that are right in front of you. And then you've got the midground, the things, you know, right at your kind of your eye level out there in the distance a little bit. Then the mountains in the background. And then beyond the mountains, you know, the sun uh, poking up there, uh, the beyond the horizon, those things you can't see, but you're looking forward to, you're anticipating. Okay? So using this tool that the God Dreams book lays out, it's a way of envisioning where we're going as a, a church, the journey that we are on. Is to think about this in terms of the foreground, midground, background, and beyond the horizon. So it's like the Martha Stewart trick, you know, where you're like, oh, it's already baked. Uh, <laughs> already prepared for you. Um, and so now to the, the, the handout, and for you folks who are uh, tuning in uh, via Zoom, I apologize for being sent this out to you before, but we can uh, get it to you. It's also it's linked in the in, in your email as well. Um, so the big picture beyond the beyond the horizon vision, and you can get the, the full length um, manifesto, so to speak, the vision statement um, was in last week's inkling. But the bottom line is, um, as the, our task force was looking at, you know, our big picture is we're, we're hard for Arcadia, serving our neighbors. But is there he says, is there a specific problem or challenge that we think we want to focus on? And to a person, the thing that came up was loneliness. When we got talking about loneliness and how, and this is again, pre-COVID and everything, and social isolation and how this is this deeply spiritual problem and how Satan uses loneliness to divide and conquer people, right? This is part of the way he works and that this loneliness um, expresses itself in what people have called deaths of despair. You know, alcoholism is way on the rise, suicide, drug abuse, um, with this common root of, of loneliness. Um, and we thought as task force, you know what, this is something that we in our local community can really address as a, as a church and wanting to be a strong community ourselves for, for the sake of our neighbors. And so kind of our big picture beyond the horizon vision was being that community for others, for the sake of our neighbors, combating loneliness, or as we said in the vision statement, being a counterattack against loneliness in our community, being that counterattack lo against loneliness, and in so doing, strengthening our own bonds as the body of believers here, so that our faith is interwoven with our everyday lives, and that we, um, as a church here, we say in that vision statement, we don't want to be a collection of strangers who see each other for an hour once a week, or two hours when there's a uh, voters meeting, right? <laughs> like single threads dangling side by side. We want to be a genuine community in Christ. Can I get an amen? Amen. Um, and in all this, we strive to be a blessing to our neighbors that make up the larger community. As it says in the book of Jeremiah, seek the peace or the shalom of the place where I have sent you into exile. And pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in its shalom, you will find your shalom. Because when the church selflessly serves her neighbors in need, she herself grows stronger in the process. That's our big picture vision. The strongly bound church that's combating loneliness in the community. So then it's a matter of, okay, how do we get there? 
how do we get to that goal, in, which is in three to five years? I realize this is small, you probably can't see it, but it's the same stuff that's on your, your handout here. And we identified four kind of milestones, four ideas. And you know, these are subject to, to change, of course, um, but the plan itself, we need, we need planning. So in that uh, background of one to three years, um, the four milestone goals there, the first one, raising up leaders, raising up leaders to multiply neighborhood ambassadors. We'll talk more about the neighborhood ambassadors in a minute. Creating this culture where the, that's just multiplied naturally. Secondly, partnering with the community to start a coffee shop. This is something when we did the first surveys a number of months ago, um, that there was a lot of interest within the church and uh, within the larger community, we think there is as well. And that this is something that we as a church can't do on our own, but that it's something we might be able to have a hand in. Thirdly, planning and planting a community garden, using our property to produce fresh greens and also to cultivate community alongside one another. And the fourth one, which I have up here is F cubed, is to, um, that stands for food, faith, and fellowship. So really expanding our, think, think about our um, suppers that we have in Advent and Lent. Expanding that so that throughout the year we have gatherings like that, or like the Ascension Day picnic, um, or the Shrove Tuesday um, pancake supper. And just a quick story about that that kind of goes along with all this. At that pancake supper, which raise your hand if you were here at the pancake supper. Remember, remember you guys were. You know that was like the last thing that we did in church? Can you believe that feels so long ago? We had a couple of services after that, but that was basically it. Um, pancake supper was great. I think we had 60 or 70 people come out. And a number of them were from the community, people who don't darken our door um, on a Sunday normally, or darken our chapel as the case may be. Um, but this one woman, not a member of our church, um, she, she made it a point on her way out to, to come and, uh, and say to me, she says, you know, thank you so much for working hard to build community in our cave. And she said, I just, you know, I'm the kind of person that I, it's easy for me to fall between the cracks. Thank you for working hard to build community here in Arcadia. And that really stuck with me and kind of goes along with the whole of the, the task force. The one year goal then from one year from now, that big mid ground goal is to equip 40 neighborhood ambassadors. We don't think that this is too ambitious and 40 because it's a good biblical number, right? We're like, oh, what should, what should be our number? But that seemed like as good a number as any. Um, to equip 40 neighborhood ambassadors. And then in the foreground, this is your three to six months, okay? And so the first thing we need to do is develop the plan and the curriculum for the, the training of these ambassadors. Secondly, start within that first um, group or cohort, a dozen or so of them. Thirdly, to launch the coffee nook, more about that in a minute. Um, and then fourthly, to have a kickoff barbecue and picnic, right? Basically to have a party. Um, so this is, this is kind of the, the map that the task force has developed with this big picture goal of strengthening our bonds in Christ by combating loneliness, of becoming the stronger community uh, for the sake of our neighbors. And then these are um, some of the goals that we've, we've set out with that. Uh, with that, I want to cede the floor to some of the members of our task force. We're going to talk a little bit more about a few of these um, goals or milestones that we've listed. So first, I'm going to ask uh, Bill Beck to talk about F cubed. Thanks. Uh, it was really a treat and a pleasure for me to participate on the task force, and I thank all the other members of the task force for being patient with me and being uh, uh, so active in the the, uh, the work that we had to do. In the interest of time, I wrote what I'm going to say, so I won't go on, but I'll, I'll stick to my script. But I wanted to start before that. My father uh, always repeated and repeated and repeated uh, something out of the Bible loosely, and that is, don't hide your candle under a bushel. And I think I'm correct that that shows up in all four Gospels. That, that saying shows up in all four Gospels. And you in this room, in each of you, in your own way, and many of those who are streaming, are the candle that we need to raise the bushel from to show to the community. That candle, when it shows onto the community, will connect the fabric of the community more to Trinity Lutheran Church. So now if you'll allow me to read what I said. 
the, the we, we came up with an acronym, by the way. As you know, some of you know I was with IBM and we loved acronyms. <laughs> so <laughs> we had H4A. I don't know if it's up there or not. Art for Arcadia. You need to do what like the kids do nowadays. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So, a little icon. The Heart for Arcadia goal is to strengthen the fabric connecting Trinity to the Arcadia community. The many, many dedicated cooks, workers, teachers, and volunteers active today at Trinity will play a key role in strengthening that fabric. Advent suppers, soup suppers, the Seder meal, thanks to Carla, Bible studies, DBS, prayer chains, and the many other Trinity activities will be the ways for Trinity's ambassadors to attract community members to Trinity. Heart for Arcadia wants all Trinity activities, all current Trinity activities, to reach out to the Trinity or to the Arcadia community. Thanks. And next up, I'd like to invite one of the Babcock trio, Terry, to talk about the Poppy Nook slash Pop Shop. It was such a pleasure and a privilege to be involved in this task force. I really learned so much about the congregation, especially about my team members that I didn't know before. I didn't know how already dedicated we are and how involved in the community. And if we take time to learn and really get to know one another. It's amazing how impactful our community is already, but I wrote this little thing so that I wouldn't go on forever. <laughs> um, we first became interested in the topic of loneliness within our community when I ran across an article in the New York Times about kodokushi, which is a Japanese word meaning lonely death. Mm. It describes a situation becoming almost commonplace as the population of Japan ages and dwindles, in which elderly people often die alone and forgotten and are not missed for weeks and months. And we began to wonder if such a good thing could happen here in Arcadia, where it becomes commonplace for people, even elders, to become so isolated and forgotten that nobody notices when they are gone. We quickly concluded that it actually could, especially given the widespread tendency of people in our community to retire here, far from their other relatives and maybe their friends that they've known for their lives because they love it here and they want to come. And yet once they're here, they are there not next to their families anymore. As we discussed the topic of loneliness in Heart for Arcadia, we realized that isolation is becoming the norm for many people, young and old. Pastor Tanetti has long been advocating for some sort of a church-based community gathering spot, such as a coffee shop. And it seemed like a good place to start might be some sort of a coffee hour held here at the church. We pick, we're picturing open doors and good neighbors stopping by just to shoot the breeze, hang out, use the internet, enjoy some coffee or maybe some cookies. Maybe they're on their way somewhere just passing by or maybe they've made a special trip to come here. Um, but there will be someone here who knows your name and, or is interested in learning it, and someone to talk to who knows how things are going and listens to the answer, and someone who notices if you haven't been by recently. We can also include some pamphlets and resources for people who might need a hand, creating an opportunity for community ministry. There's lots of possibilities. Our ideas are really still being developed, but of course our plans will have to take COVID into account. Um, we think that the offering of welcome and hospitality and a helping hand is central to our mission as Christians, and this is a way to begin. We're talking about creating a lounging area, perhaps outside in the summertime, or a lounging area inside some here, we're here in the church, as the weather changes. It's really fairly easy to going, very inexpensive to run, and hopefully we can generate enough interest and involvement to make it a regular part of our church's routine. Well so the, yeah, the idea is, uh, especially initially, kind of a, thing of like a coffee nook, where basically we repurpose the book nook and have coffee out of there, 
baked goods, what have you, a couple few days a week, open the church doors, especially while it's nice out, use this courtyard, which was so underutilized, maybe set up a table outside, um, and just be a place where folks can gather. Um, this past week, or, uh, we had a couple of gals who were sitting out in their car more than one day during the week, and I saw, what are you guys doing? You know, hey, how are you guys doing? They said, well, we just, we needed a spot to use Wi-Fi and just to hang out for a little bit. It's like, well, you can come into the church, you know? And I'm like, really? Uh, they just needed a place to hang out, right? And uh, Big Apple's closed, I don't know. Um, where else did they go? Um, and, and so they did. Kind of what we're thinking, being, uh, creating those contexts for relationship and community. All right, uh, last but most certainly not least, one Esther's gonna talk about a neighborhood ambassador. <coughs> I didn't obviously type it all over. <laughs> as far as keeping it short, that, that comes natural to me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, you know, the idea of being a neighborhood ambassador, you guys are doing it all the time. You know, and you see somebody walking down the street, hi, hey, how are you? Strike up a conversation. It's an everyday occurrence. And we have our elders that are watching, looking, you know, what the needs are of the congregation. We're doing that all the time. The greeters at the door. Hey, I haven't seen you there before. I'm so and so. Introducing yourself. And, and I see people in the pews doing that. Introducing yourself to the new person, the visitor. And this is how community ambassadors work. Our neighborhood ambassadors, and we're creating um, opportunities to get to know one another. And through that, we have opportunities to share not only the love of Jesus that we have for them, but Jesus' love that He has for them. And you never know where that's going to lead. I have the privilege of getting the well, not from where I live, my neighbor, um, she's elderly and, and she couldn't um, get around very well. And being a widow, lived by herself, oh, five, six years, I would take vegetables up to her. Tomatoes, she just dearly loved. And so, you know, she'll come back and visit, you know, and if you got any tomatoes, <laughs> 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 that's so. Uh, I mean, this kept on going for, for years. And then her daughter, who um, had moved in with her to take care of her because she her health got worse, um, she had to have surgery. And so she asked if I would be willing to look in on, on my neighbor and, and uh, do whatever needed to be done. Well, sure, I'd be glad to. And, and, you know, only be a couple of weeks which turned into almost three months. <laughs> and uh, go up there every day. And there were times when a little conversation here and there, um, Bible verse would come up in my head and I'd share, you know. She'd ask different things about the Bible or education. And then, you know, one day she said, why are you doing this? You won't take any money. Why are you doing this? And that was a beautiful opportunity. I could say, because Jesus has done so much for me. And it's it's a little thing he puts in my heart to be able to want to do things for other people. And in this relationship continued. Her daughter came back and well, one day I did call from her daughter. She's in the hospital, the, the older lady's in the hospital, and uh, she doesn't have long to live. So she wants to see you. Okay, so I go to the hospital, stand by her bed, and take her hand, talk to her, raise the club. Do you think you're ready to meet your Lord? And she said, I don't know. And I uh, said, Well, we know you can be sure. You can be ready. All it takes is trusting in Jesus that He did what needed to be done to forgive all your sins when He died on the cross. 
And just then the nurse came in. <laughs> that was the end of the conversation, but not the end of the story. Um, she went home in the hospice care, and um, I got a call from the daughter. She's not doing well. She's not going to be with us hardly. Uh, maybe a couple hours, but she wants to see. Me. Oh, okay. So I go up, sit down, start talking to her, and she's on morphine. So, you know, she's dozing on and off this whole time. And um, so I said, Well, I guess I'll let, go and let you get some rest. And she perked right up. She said, don't you go anywhere. You sit right here and visit me. <laughs> so I sat there until she was totally sound asleep. And I had to leave. And I was able to say to her daughter, be sure to get your, her pastor to come and minister to her. And who knows what opportunities. But see, sometimes it's just sitting there. Not doing a thing, just sitting. But that's that's what happens. We're all baptized Christians. And as baptized Christians, guess what we have? We're in our hearts. Not only the Holy Spirit that we get through baptism, but our God's a trinity, you know. So we got Jesus here too, and the Father. And no greater love than anybody than Jesus. You know, and so we have that. And no matter where we go or what we do, whether it's, you know, pulling weeds in a neighbor's garden or whatever, breaking leaves, who knows? The opportunities will be there. But we're given Jesus' love to everybody we come in contact with. And that's what being an ambassador is all about, is spreading the joy, spreading the love of Jesus. So, just want to encourage all of you to sign up and, and help us meet that 40 goal. We're looking forward to it. You see why I put her last, right? <laughs> and I, I, I told the task force, I'm not ashamed to say it in front of her, right? Basically, we're saying we, we want to raise up 40 more esters, okay? <laughs> um, your hope, hopefully you're thinking at this point, okay, I'm excited about the things that we've been doing already. I want to get more involved. What, what can I do? So I'm just going to give you a few things. First of all, so uh, starting in, in the fall, we're going to begin having these 12-week training sessions of being formed and equipped as neighborhood ambassadors. And you're going to be paired with somebody else. You can pick your pair. If you're, if you're married, you want to go through it with, with your spouse or, or a friend or what have you. And you're going to have a, a mission, 12 missions, a, a mission each week. And it's going to get a little bit tougher, a little bit tougher each, each week, um, helping to form us as these neighborhood ambassadors. So we'll, we'll do 12-week cohorts, and we'll, our goal is to have four of those over the next year, see? And then each of those, hopefully, some more folks, and by the end of the year, 40 is the goal. But I think, you know, why, can't, why couldn't it be 100? Why couldn't it be more? But um, if you're interested in doing that, let me know, can enroll for that first group. Um, and we've also got some other exciting things along the line. Somebody said t-shirts, maybe. We're, uh, we're done, but you're only going to get a t-shirt if you enroll, okay? Um, so uh, that's, that's the one big thing. The second thing, uh, if you want to help out with the coffee nook, whether it be with you know, physical space type stuff, or whether it be you're interested in being a volunteer, kind of working the counter, whatever that looks like, or preparing baked goods. I think there's a, this is the kind of thing that you can plug in in a lot of different ways. Talk to Ken and Terry, they're really spearheading that effort and uh, you can get in, involved with that. But this is really, we hope that it's clear the path forward. And by the way, I'll pick on Mark one last time before I go. You're probably thinking at this point, isn't this where pastor asks for a bunch of money? <laughs> and the answer is no. I mean, guys, all, most, all these things we're talking about, it's just a matter of investing ourselves, see? Um, there's going to be a little bit of an outlay for the coffee nook, um, but nothing that's too extraordinary. We're hoping that maybe from the endowment funds that we, we do have, some of that interest might be to be able to use that. Um, but this is really just about us continuing the momentum and keeping it going. I'll leave you with this last story. I apologize. It's already gone a lot longer than 
totally planned. But um, I, I get a call a couple of weeks ago um, from a guy, not from our church, but uh, kind of a prominent member of the community. If I mention his name, you would know who I'm talking about. But he calls, and uh, you know, we kind of small talk a little bit. He says, hey, Pastor, I've got a friend. Uh, they got their um, stimulus check or what have you, and they really want to help uh, somebody in the community who's in need. Uh, oh, that's great. That's, that's really nice. And we talked about that. I said, but why are you calling me? He said, well, um, we were both talking about who, who, who needs help and who would know. And he said, you know, our thought was the first place that came to my mind who would know was Trinity Lutheran Church. And I said, doggone it, it's happening. <laughs> so let's keep it going, church. 